I consider it a privilege, an opportunity to always meet up with you and share what I have with you. Good day, people, and welcome back to Life Talk TV. This is the second video on our series that What Disease Am I? What Disease Am I? And today we are looking at foul pox. We are looking at the foul pox disease. So take your time, watch the video to the end as we digest or delve into this disease as to the signs and symptoms how to treat it or how to and how to prevent it and what really cause um, causes this disease so don't go anywhere stay with us Welcome back. If you have not subscribed to this channel or if you are a first time visitor, we plead with you that you take a moment to subscribe to the channel, share our videos, um, pass comments on them, and also like our videos. This will help us to reach out to more farmers. Yes, we are looking at the fowlpox disease. And it is our second video in the series, Fowlpox disease. It is also called the, um, the avian pox. The avian pox. This disease is caused by the pox virus. Yes, it is caused by the pox virus. So it means that it is a disease that is caused by a virus. Now let's look at the, the types. There are two main types of foul pox disease. There are two main types. We have the dry pox and the wet pox. The dry pox and the wet pox. Now, in fact, the, the only difference is that the dry pox appears outside the body or it appears on the outside body of the bed. What it means is that the signs and symptoms are mostly outside. Then the wet normally appears within and normally in the mouth of your bed. One other difference is that the wet is more dangerous. The wet box is more dangerous than the dry one. It has severe impacts on your bed than the dry one. Let's look at the susceptibility. Susceptibility. We've already explained this in our introduction video. Susceptibility. When you say susceptibility, we mean the breed of pets that are vulnerable to this disease, this disease. And in this case, the fowl pox can affect all types of chickens. All types of chickens. All types of chickens. It can also affect or infect the um, other birds, such as wild birds, turkeys, pigeons, guinea fowls, quills, etc. So susceptibility, it means that these are the type of birds that the fowl post can infect. Now let's look at the vulnerability. Vulnerability. That is the situation of your bed that would make them weak 
to be infected by this disease. And in this case, we are looking at birds whose immune system have been compromised. Birds whose immune systems have been compromised. In this case, if I'm to explain further, it means birds that in a way have been infected by other viruses or bacteria or any form of disease and probably might be recovering or are still um, having the disease. So in this case, it means that the immune system have been already have already been compromised. So they can easily um, get infected by the foul pox. Again, when your birds are exposed to wild birds, when your birds are exposed to wild birds, that is your area where you have your farm, you get the intrusion or the invasion of wild birds, then you are really making your birds vulnerable to the foul pox disease. Now let's look at the, the morbidity. Morbidity. When you say morbidity, we mean the number of infections per population. The number of infections per population. That is the number of your beds in your farm. If should, uh, should the foul pox infect your total population, we are looking at the total number that will be infected, that are likely to be infected by the virus. And here we are looking at from zero to hundred percent. What it means is that when this disease infects your beds, from the first bed or the zero bed to the last bed on your farm, all of them could be infected by the virus. And statistics shows that if the virus infects your bed, it could take weeks to actually fight it off or um, heal your bed of this disease. And in the whole flock, that is your total flock or your, your farm, it could take months to fight it. It could take months to fight it. Now let's look at the means of transmission. That is how the virus sprays. First, it's mostly through mosquito bites. Mostly through mosquito bites. So when the mosquito bites a bird that has virus, it carries the virus, and then when it bites um, a bird that, has, that does not have the virus, it will infect it with the virus. So that is mostly how it spreads. It spreads. However, an infected bird can also transfer it to the other. That is when they peck their feathers, when they peck their feathers, or even drink from the same drinker with them. Mortality rate, mortality, that is the number of deaths per population. If this virus infects your flock, we are looking at both the dry and the wet pox, it could kill from zero to five percent of your population. So this means that it is not really a dangerous um, disease. However, it depends on how you fight it. It depends on how you fight it and the immune system level of your base. So from zero to five percent of your population, you can easily lose them to the virus. Now let's look at the ways to detect, that is the signs and symptoms, how to, to, to detect the virus, or when your, your pets have the virus, how do you identify it, signs and symptoms? 
One, there is a drastic loss of weight. There is a drastic loss of weight. Two, especially with layers, there is a sudden drop of production. There is a sudden drop of production. So the birds will reduce the number of eggs they produce in a day. Three, there is lots of appetite. Loss of appetite. You, you give them the, the feed all right, but they will not take it because they are not well. They are suffering from the um, foul pox disease. So loss of appetite. Again, there is reduced consumption of water. There is a reduced consumption of water. Reduced consumption of water. Once again, with the dry pox, you will see lessons on the skinny areas of your bed. That is where there are no um, feathers. So on the comb, on the face, wattles, sometimes the severe ones, you could even have them on the legs and even on the skin. Then the wet one, mostly when you open their mouth, you see there are swallows or um, lessons in the mouth. And normally it affects the upper respiratory tract. That is why the wet uh, pox usually kills the beds more than the dry one because when it's their mouth are swollen they cannot eat and they are not able to survive after some time let's look at prevention and treatments prevention and treatments unfortunately there is no treatment for the Foul pox disease. There is no medicine that is known to treat it. People have their unconventional ways of treating it, but we do not have any drug that is made to treat the foul pox disease. However, there are ways to prevent it. The first and most important tend to do to prevent this virus is to one, vaccinate them against the disease. Vaccinate your best. There is vaccination for it. So when you vaccinate them, they become um, strong and their immune system is prepared to fight off the virus forever. So vaccination. Two, Biosecurity. Sometimes you can carry the virus into the farm. So have your bio biosecurity intact so that no one brings the virus into your farm. Again, weed around your farm, clean the environment so that mosquitoes will not be hatching anyhow. Because the more the population of mosquitoes in your farm, the more the um, the chances of biting your beds. So clean your environment and clear your environment of mosquitoes. Then finally, make sure that you do not allow in wild beds to have any form of uh, contact with your beds. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching our video. We have discussed the foul pox disease. It's our hope that if one suffering from it, you you find ways and means to fight it off. And if you are not, then you surely have to prevent the disease from entering your farm. Thank you for watching our video. Please pass comments on our videos, share this video, and also subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much and watch out for the next video. Bye-bye.